So human bites are the third most frequent type of bite presenting to the emergency department. The first are dogs followed by cats. The most common locations for bites are the hands and face. Infection rates vary depending on the location of the bite, whether there's any joint or tendon involvement and the timing of the presentation. Two of the most common types of injuries sustained with human bites, oh, sorry, there are two types of injuries sustained with human bites. The most common is a clenched fist injury, which we'll discuss in more detail shortly. And the other being occlusive bites, which present more like animal bites, causing ovoid shaped tissue destruction by compression. The circumstances of the bite can help guide treatment. The most frequent scenarios are aggressive behavior or fights, often in conjunction with alcohol or other substances. Additionally, bites can be the result of sexual play or sexual assault, domestic violence, child abuse, seizure related injury, or self inflicted injury. Occupational injuries can be seen in dental professionals, law enforcement officers, and uh, caretakers of individuals with special needs. The human mouth contains a high concentration of about 100 different virulent bacteria. This combination results in a high incidence of infections. The most common pathogens are streptococcus and staphylococcus, but infections are often polymicrobial, including uh, aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Studies of human bite infections have found an average of five different microorganisms per wound. Transmissions of various infections, infectious disease have also been reported. These diseases include hepatitis B and C, HIV, herpes, and syphilis. An understanding of the circumstances leading to the bite can help guide testing and, and uh, any indicated prophylactic treatments. While tetanus infections are rare, it should still be considered in high-risk wounds such as punctures, injuries of the hand, and delayed presentations. A special category of human bites is the clenched fist injury, otherwise known as the fight bite. These injuries occur from one individual punching another in the mouth with considerable force at impact. Patients typically extend their hand after the injury, which allows deeper penetration of bacteria into the joint space or tendon sheath. This allows proximal extension of uh, the infection and can lead to tenosynovitis, septic arthritis, or osteomyelitis. Infections may spread aggressively due to the complex tendon sheath anatomy of the hand, as well as the relative avascularity of these structures. The wounds classically appear over the dorsal aspect of the third and fourth or fifth uh, MCP joints and are benign appearing due to their small size. The dorsum of the hand should be carefully examined in the clenched fist position after a reported patient history of fist fighting. Because these injuries are small and appear innocuous, patients will often not immediately seek treatment and their care will be delayed. In more than 50% of cl clenched fist injuries, there is penetration of the MCP joint and often concurrent tendon, cartilage, or bone injuries. Providers must have a high index of suspicion and ask the patient targeted questions. Due to the nature of these injuries, it's important to conduct a thorough skin examination to look for other evidence of assault or injury. Plain x-rays can assist with the investigation to rule out occult fractures. Any injuries with evidence of infection should be cultured to guide treatment. All clenched fist injuries should be examined by a hand surgeon due to the limited reconstruction options should an infection develop. Suspicious bite wounds should be reported to appropriate authorities, especially those in children. Photographs and measurements should be recorded, and when appropriate, forensic evidence can be collected. The incisor to canine distance can be measured to, you, to differentiate between an adult or child assailant. Risk factors for infection must be reviewed, specifically considering patient factors, such as alcoholism or cirrhosis, immunocompromised and diabetes. Wound factors must also be considered, such as age of injury, location of injury, size of injury, puncture wounds, and de any devitalization, full thickness wounds, or the proximity to joints, uh, tendons, and ligaments. So the management. Uh, the early management of human bites should include wound irrigation to facilitate examination and removal of any visible foreign bodies. Immobilization at functional position and elevation are also essential. Most human bites can safely be managed on an outpatient basis. However, infected bites and those with high risk features should be considered for admission, IV antibiotics, 
possible surgical exploration, and very close observation. Acceptable agents of antibiotic prophylaxis include augmentin, fluoroquinolones with clindamycin, or Bactrim, or doxycycline if the patient is penallergic. Antibiotics should be administered for a period of three to five days, and patients should be followed closely for development of infection. High risk and infected wounds will require longer duration of therapy, and treatment should be tailored based on any available cultures. Severe infections, including osteomyelitis, tenosynovitis, can be seen with these clenched fist injuries. They must be managed promptly and followed closely until resolution. Only 10% of patients with septic arthritis will actually regain function of the involved joint, and amputation is often necessary. Most bites with lacerations or loss of tissue, especially on the face, can actually be primarily closed. However, high-risk bites, such as puncture bites or any type of bites on the hands or cases with delayed presentation to the emergency room should not be sutured because of the increased risk of infection. In cases where, uh, with primary repair, close follow-up should be done in the first 48 to 72 hours after the wound is closed to ensure that no infection has occurred. Thank you.